Hey friends, it's Thomas here. So today I'm going to talk about Macintosh. Uh, so what do I have here? I have the Macintosh C7712 preamp. I have the Macintosh uh, MC352. And then I have a Macintosh. I think this is the 2100. So Macintosh is the only gear where the price actually goes up as time goes by. Uh, I had the Macintosh MA6900 integrated M. Two years ago, I sold it for 3,900, and I thought I did pretty good uh, selling at such a high price because I was looking around that time, uh, the average around 3,006 to 3,009. But ever since I sold it, I've never seen it below 4,006. So the price actually went up compared to two years ago. So let's talk about the Macintosh sound. If I have to describe it, um, it's really warm, it's effortless, uh, it's a bit, it's not rolled off on the top, but very soft on the top end, while still able to deliver a lot of detail, very good mid-range. It has very good decay, very musical, and it has very good bass. Uh, but above all, it is velvety smooth. I don't even know if that's proper English, but it is very smooth. So I, I personally think that most people like Macintosh sound. So that's why in the used market, they're like hotcakes. If your price is right, it will sell in five minutes. I, I think one of the strengths of Macintosh, and a lot of people hate that, is that you can give it garbage in and it's not garbage out. It's not really transparent, as I said, not very accurate, right? It's like you can give it crappy ingredient and it's going to serve you a gourmet meal. I like that. I like that because, you know, I, at the end of the day, it's the output that's important for me. I don't need it to be accurate. So given the fact that it's not accurate, so it's definitely not good for testers um, because I can pair it with anything and it sounds good. I can pair it with any speaker and it sounds good. Now, that's not true, for example, with my, uh, my bell canto there, for example. That is very specific. You can't just put any speaker with it, while the Macintosh, just, just put anything with it and it will sound good. Alright, so uh, let's take a look at the uh, Macintosh C712 System Control Center. Uh, what I like about these old preamp is the loudness control. It's, it's basically like a bass boost. Uh, I just like that warm sound, yes, yes, it's not accurate and it's exaggerated. That's fine. You have the treble, you have the bass control which uh, audio files say is the devil, but you know, um, I, I personally like these stuff. The C712, it's what I call an entry level preamp. Um, if I were to compare these preamps with the newer ones, it does lack the resolution that my new preamp can give me. So when I pair it with uh, my modern speakers, like the Dying Audio, the Monitor GX300, uh, um, I feel that there is lack of clarity when you compare it to the newer preamps, right? So despite it being Macintosh, it's just what I call a so-so preamp. Now I went online before I bought it. I hear people's comment is really fast. Well, then again, everything is relative compared to what preamp, right? Compared to my Marantz, for me, it's like a turtle. Um, but regardless for uh, entry level, preamp i guess it's okay uh, i don't have much i don't have a lot of comments about it i listen to it and i don't really feel anything it's just like yeah it's okay the macintosh mc7352 however it's a fantastic amp i feel very confident with this amp it's a lot of power every time when i test something if it doesn't sound good i, I don't fit i like the amp is not part of the equation when i troubleshoot I work on other things such as maybe it's the preamp, maybe it's the cables, it could be the speaker, it could be anything. But for me, it is never the amp anymore. I bought it because uh, I bought these Dying Audio uh, S5.4. Those speakers are really difficult to work with and I needed to get something that, that's very smooth. Not just smooth, but very, very smooth to go with it. So that's why I bought this. I wish I could have bought two because then I can monoblock it and drive it with 700 watts of power right now it's giving out 350 watts of power um i like the the, the meters and light in the front it's very retro looking but i think it's part of its charm um at the back you can 
there's binding posts, and that's true for all Macintosh where you, you have specific speaker binding posts for 4 ohms, 2 ohms, and 8 ohms. Uh, the downside with this is that if you mono block it, it will only deliver 700 watt if your speaker is rated at 4 ohms. If your speaker is rated at 8 ohms, it will still just deliver 350 watts, so there's no point mono blocking it. So, one thing I noticed when I got the Macintosh 352, especially with the monitor GX300, is that the clarity is really, really good with it. Um, in fact, I was messaging my friend, I say, wow, I can now hear the person's breathing even one level more. So why am I obsessed about able to hear the singer breathing? Because for me, the, one of the most important aspects of listening to a song is to hear the emotions. Emotions, right? Um, what gives emotions to a song? The lyrics, uh, the background story of the song, maybe if you understand uh, your knowledge of the singer herself. And I think because it, you cannot see a singer when you listen to music, right? So everything is through the, the voice. And a person's emotion is conveyed by the, the valleys and peaks, right, of the, the breathing. So if you want to hear sadness, it has to, it has to come through, uh, from the breathing. So that's why when I listen to very expensive system, it does that really, really well. And when I listen to entry level system, I feel like there's like um, a veil in front of it. So if you ever got a chance to experience high end system, I think that's something that you should pay attention to. Now, my nephew, who doesn't know anything about stereo, the other day I invite him over and we sat down and we listened to Dying Audio. And for him, that's the first thing he catch with the system like this. I can, as the way he described it, I can hear the, the singer's lip moving. There's so much clarity that you feel like you can hear the singer's lip moving. And when I got the 352, I noticed that it gets, it's really good at this part. You see, the problem with today's speaker is that a lot of them is very bright. It feels like every manufacturer is trying to achieve the ultimate clarity with their speakers. And I think one of the problems is that it might, sometimes they might overdo it. And once you start combining all the cables and so forth, it's easy to enter the harsh territory. And the characteristic of the Macintosh, because it's very strong in the mid-range, a little bit soft on the top, as I mentioned, really powerful on the bottom. I think that these, that's why it's very, very good with modern speakers. Don't know, maybe not with the older speakers, but uh, with today's speaker, it's absolutely fantastic. All right, so then uh, let's move on to the this one. As you can see, this is like a rusted tin can, you, something that you pick up from a dumpster. Ever since I started playing with a more expensive uh, gear, like uh, amps in the 2000 plus, 3000 and so forth, it's very difficult to go back to amps that are in the sub 1000 zone, right? For example, the uh, Rotel 1080, which I used to have, the ATI 1502, the Bryston 4B, the original one. Uh, I tried quite a few amps, right? So right now when I get amps like these, sub $1,000 amp, I, I can't listen to them anymore. Not being snobbish, not at all. It's just the fact that uh, once you try really good food, it's hard to go back to junk food, right? Oh, no, junk food is still really good. It's hard to go back to, to you know, bad food, right? So, as you know, I, I, I buy amps a lot, I sell them a lot. So there are many transition periods where I don't have any amps. So this amp is the only one that I keep because its performance level, uh, to my taste of course, is up there with all my very expensive amp. I don't feel that this is like an inferior product. I don't share that same feeling as other sub $1,000 amp. These are between 600 to 900 on the used market, but I love its sound. It has only 105 watt. However, it has quite a lot of bass. It's as if the Macintosh engineer cheated and used the treble control, uh, sorry, the bass control and boosted it to the max. So the end result, you get a lot of bass, a little bit boomy, uh, not tight at all. However, I like the fact that it has bass. 
Now, once again, I'm comparing to uh, amps like this. When I say that bass is not tight, right? Compared to maybe a Rotel 1080 is fantastic. So if you look at the, the unit, even the, the power cable is built in. Uh, in the front there, the, the, I bought these uh, dot, uh, adapters, speaker adapters uh, from uh, Amazon. Product cost like two, three bucks. And it's uh, hilarious that I'm plugging in, uh, you know, a very expensive speaker cable to it. I mean, it's a bit silly actually. Uh, but regardless, it's, it's uh, really nice sounding. Uh, if you want high-end sound, um, I think this is the best bang for the buck. Uh, I lend it to my other friends also, uh, who, who, who are used to high-end equipment. And uh, yeah, for them, it, it's pretty good too. In fact, actually, I remember one time we were testing uh, more high-end gear, but you know, it didn't, it didn't, there was not good synergy with um, the KEF 105, which is a very old speaker. And then we took this out, we plug it in, and uh, we end up spending the rest of the testing session just listening to this amp because it's definitely very smooth. In fact, you know, I'm more excited about this amp than this amp. 352 is an $8,000 amp when it was new. So even on the used market today, it's about four, sub four, just a bit underneath 4,000, but you expect it to perform like a very good amp, right? I mean, if you're paying that kind of money, yeah, I'm expecting that. So there's no surprise. However, this one, you're getting it from the, like, you know, it's like I got it from a garbage dump, dumpster and yet it performs really, really good. So that is why I am not selling this uh, amp. In fact, I was even thinking finding a second one to monoblock it. All right, so I guess I'll wrap it up. Um, so for this review, I actually went online to read up about Macintosh and I was surprised that there is a lot of haters when it comes to Macintosh. For me, I thought, you know, um, even if you don't appreciate the sound, you should appreciate its strength, right? Um, I, I don't know why. Uh, I thought that, you know, because of the fact that you have a lot of people liking it, that's why in the used market, it is in high demand. Sure, of course, like any gear, it has its flaw. Yeah, it is very pricey, uh, but at the same time, it does retain its value a lot. So if you're one of those who judge its performance uh, by going to an audio show, uh, I, I think that maybe you should give it another try because audio show is not the best place to evaluate an equipment. In fact, the other day at the Montreal Audio Show, my friend who was looking actively for a Macintosh 601 monoblock heard it there and say, wow, it sounds so bad. And we know that it's part of, part of the reason was the, the speakers they chose to go with it, right? And uh, fortunately, we have experience with uh, Macintosh. So for us, it was just like, man, it's just badly set up. But if you base your opinion on hearing the opinions of others on the internet, I, I think you'll be you're you're missing out. They're fantastic, and it's uh, one of my favorite M. This uh, three five two. All right, questions, comment. So uh, till next time.